Hurricane Fiona picking up steam as it moves off the Turks and Caicos Islands. It's already slammed the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. That's right. Fiona has done its damage, dumping as much as 30 inches of rain in some places. It came five years after Puerto Rico was blasted by Hurricane Maria, and that's when 150 mile an hour winds led to more than 2,700 deaths. So far, only one reported death from Fiona in Puerto Rico, but power is out to most of the island, and many people here in New York may have no idea how their relatives are actually doing. So here to talk about it all is Melissa Mark Viverito, the former city council speaker. She was born in Puerto Rico and now is chief policy officer for the Puerto Rican Cultural Center. Good morning. Good morning to you all. Uh, you know, let's begin first of all. Your mom, you know, lives in Puerto Rico. We've spoken about this in the before when you've been on our show, but we understand she was actually here this time with you. Did you get her here to avoid the hurricane? No, actually, we had a planned um, vacation. Uh, she had not seen my family, my extended family, for some time uh, since Hurricane Maria, actually, and COVID. Uh, but she actually went back yesterday, and she flew back. She was anxious to get back home. And like many others in Puerto Rico, she does not have light. Uh, mm -hmm. She does not have electricity. She does not have water. Oh. And that is still the reality for the vast majority of Puerto Ricanos on the island. Um, so I want to thank you for being able to talk about this. And my heart also and my solidarity goes out to our compañeros, compañeras, Dominicanos, who are also obviously um, suffering a similar situation. So we've had a few days to take a look at what's been going on there, the damage left behind. Have you heard anything about the overall damage Puerto Rico has suffered from Fiona? Look, let me, let me just say this. This is uh, devastating in a different way, right? Yeah. We are talking about historic levels of water saturation that have hit Puerto Rico in a very short period of time. Uh, the Weather Channel actually tweeted that the equivalent of the amount of water in the last couple of days is, is maybe like, what was it, 2.6 thousand Empire State buildings, wow. right? In terms of the amount of water that has just saturated this island. You've seen the images of the flooding, of the rivers overflowing, of people losing their homes, of people being stranded, of, of agriculture, livestock, the hospitals. I mean, the, the way that this impacts the day-to-day, the -day, it is a crisis mm -hmm. that is historic, and of obviously in a different way than Maria, but it is a historic level of trauma. We are living cycles of trauma in Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. and that definition of insanity, right? You keep doing the same thing over and again, expecting a different result. The approach to the way that federal response and local response is addressing uh, these crises is insufficient. Right. We can't continue to just, one, throw uh, money at it because that's what again people are clamoring there's a lot of money that is already in the pipeline that has yet to be spent the okay. problem is that the money gets channeled it within the central government that just does not have the capacity to yeah. handle so all of this money the answer solution um, is to basically involve local communities. Municipalities have to be part of the solution local NGOs have to be part of the solution money has to be given to them directly, but also they have to be part of the decision-making process. Mm -hmm. It cannot be a hands-down approach, right? It has to be a community up, a community-led rebuilding and reconstruction process. Yeah, and, and a lot of what you're talking about in terms of what we're seeing play out this time is on the heels five years since Hurricane Maria. Yes. And we just had somebody on yesterday, a local who lived in that area who has her own relief group on the ground in Puerto Rico, was talking about how they still have homes that need to be rebuilt from Maria yeah. that haven't been reconstructed, right? So how, yes. when you're talking about the federal aid and, and the approach, how is the federal aid this go around in terms of getting things moving? Well, the, the, look, you know, the, the, the FEMA director is someone that we knew well, know well right here in the city of New York. She used to be the OEM uh, director here in the city of New York under de Blasio Criswell. Uh, so she is in Puerto Rico now. She has talked about, right, first and foremost, saving lives, very important. Uh, but many of us in the advocacy community, right, are saying that, one, the Luma contract, which is the privatization of the electric grid mm -hmm. and the distribution of electricity, needs to be uh, uh, abolished, right? We need to end that contract. That contract needs to end and needs to be rescinded. How do you do that? The other, the, uh, I'm sorry? How do you do that? How do you end that you, contract? They basically, the, the, con the governor has the authority to not uh, to end that contract. He will say all the reasons why he cannot do it. He supported the privatization of the grid, let's be real. Um, but that contract needs to end. And 
right here in my hand. This is a community-led response on how we build and bring more energy resiliency to Puerto Rico. There are solutions on the ground that need to be heard and that need to be um, empowered. That is not happening. The solutions are with the people. It is not with the bureaucracy. So one, ending the contract, but two, the Congress needs to get rid of La Junta, what we call La Junta, which is the Fiscal Control Board, which is also strangling Puerto Rico because they support the privatization of local resources. They also are more interested in paying the debt and the bondholders on Wall Street than they are to empower the, the needs of the mm. people. So those are two very, very important issues. We cannot continue to repeat the mistakes of the past. We cannot continue. We are living trauma day after day. It's a cycle. If yes. you talk to people on the ground, like I have obviously with my friends and extended family, they are exhausted. Mm -hmm. exactly. They are tired. There's a mental health crisis that is out of control. Hospitals don't have energy, don't have electricity. It is just not acceptable that this is the reality we're living yeah, in. And clearly in something in needs, every day. Yeah, clearly yes. something needs to change. Thank you so much for Thank your time, you so Alyssa. Much. We always appreciate having you on the show. Thank you.